supposed to make us aware of breast cancer, a disease that now affects one in every eight American women. Here's something else to be aware of. Benzene is linked to breast cancer, according to the Institute of Medicine. Benzene is released from drilling and fracking operations. So, all the decision makers at Denver, if you want us to stop breast cancer, you have to stop fracking. So, I'm a biologist, and I do science in all kinds of places. But fracking has taken my science to, to venues that I never imagined. Last month, for example, a man knocked on my door. He invited me to come with him the following morning. He and some other locals were going to be chaining themselves to a fence on Seneca Lake. That's where there are compressor stations going in in order to store fracked gas from Pennsylvania in depleted salt mines underneath the lake. He wanted to know, as they were being arrested, would I speak to the press about formaldehyde emissions from compressor stations? Formaldehyde, like benzene, is a known human carcinogen. And would I speak about the exemptions granted in 2005 from the Safe Drinking Water Act and key provisions of the Clean Air Act and Clean Water Act? Because of them, the chemicals used in drilling and fracking operations can be claimed as trade secrets. Public release of their identity is not mandated by federal right to know provisions that govern other industries. High volume, slick water, horizontal hydraulic fracturing would be a crime if the requirements of our federal laws applied, but they don't. And he wanted to know, would I talk about that? And so I did. The next morning, 17 people blocked the gate, the oldest of which was 85. Mm -hmm. At age 53, I was one of the youngest people there. And in the end, three people were arrested for trespassing, including a retired Methodist minister who loves to fish. <laughs> Another of those arrested went to jail for 15 days. Her name is Susan Walker. She's a mother, and she's a nurse, and she's my age. The summer before all this, as Russell mentioned, I traveled across the country to research the public health effects of fracking. And I happened to be in Salt Lake City in July on the day that Tim DeChristopher was sentenced to prison for disrupting three years earlier the auction of public lands for gas and oil drilling. Tim had participated in the auction as a bidder and indeed had won many bids, but without the millions of dollars in his bank account needed to make the purchase. The publicity surrounding his actions revealed that the auctioning of these lands was illegal. But that outcome did not prevent him from being charged with fraud. And on July 26, 2011, he was sentenced to two years in federal prison. I was at the courthouse when it happened, and in the most extraordinary moment, Tim said to the judge, I am not asking for mercy. I am asking for you to join me. And Tim said, as you know, this is what love looks like. And then the federal marshals led him away in chains. And those words changed me. They changed me. Soon after, I received that phone call letting me know that I was the lucky recipient of a Heinz Award for my research and writing on environmental health came with this $100,000 cash prize. It didn't take me long, with Tim to Christopher's words in my heart, to decide to donate the award to the fight against fracking. And, no, it's an act of survival. It's not an act of philanthropy, right? 40% of the land in my home county is leased to the gas industry, including some land not far from the end of my block. And I am the mother of an 11-year-old son who struggles with asthma. I am not going to let that happen. I can't stop it alone. That's why I became the co-founder of this coalition, 
Nation, New Yorkers Against Fracking, which now has 180 groups and over a thousand businesses. And this is a, a model that I bring to you and suggest uh, for you to try because we have now become, in our alliance, the fracking abolitionist movement of New York. And in, in our coalition are artists against fracking, faith leaders against fracking, wineries against fracking, elected officials against fracking, chefs against fracking, and we are currently working on doctors against fracking, because that is what love looks like. So last August, New Yorkers Against Fracking, together with our friends at 350.org, Green Umbrella and other groups organized this march and rally in Albany. And for this event, I was given a weighty writing assignment to compose the first draft of a pledge that would express our solemn commitment to nonviolent resistance should uh, fracking move forward. And you too have a pledge here in Colorado, which I commend to you. I can tell you that in New York, over 6,000 New Yorkers have now signed our pledge, and I am one of them. As both the signatory and the author of the document, it is my fervent hope that we will never have to activate it. I hope that the power of the signatures alone will change the course of providence and prevent the governor from lifting our current moratorium that protects us. I don't want to write words that fill jail cells. Yet it is my abiding responsibility to protect my children from harm and to plan for their future. And my neighbors feel the same way. The air and the water and the food of our children's bodies are constructed out of the rearranged molecules of the environment. If we, we can't do our job as parents, if the day comes when I can be a better mother inside a jail cell than outside, then I will be that parent. As our fellow pledge signer Bill McGibbon reminds us, going to jail is not the end of the world. Only the end of the world is the end of the world. Let me close with a, uh, with a quote from my uh, guiding spirit, Rachel Carson, whose home county, by the way, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, is being turned inside out by the fracking industry. Shame on them. It was Rachel Carson's discovery as a small girl of a fossilized seashell in a hillside on her father's farm northwest of Pittsburgh that made her realize that she was living on top of an ancient ocean floor and made her fall in love with the sea. And that same fossil represents the fossils that the oil and gas industry are now going after. Only the fossils that they want are not the stony ones. They're the fossilized bubbles of methane that have been trapped inside the layers of shale in the bedrock below our feet. Here's what Rachel Carson said, and it points us to what we need to do today. Fifty years ago, she wrote, if Having endured much, we have at last asserted our right to know. And if knowing, we have concluded that we are being asked to take senseless and frightening risks, then we should no longer accept the counsel of those who tell us that we must fill our world with poisonous chemicals. Instead, we must look about and see what course is open to us. That's what love looks like. Thank you, everyone.